I think it's important to take care of the environment because it's where we live and like we need it to be there. Like if we didn't have the environment, we wouldn't be alive. I saw that much plastic on our beach and like I felt pretty shocked actually. With an island, we don't have as much resource as we would if we lived on the mainland. And like with such a little resource, we have to be able to sustain it and keep it going for as long as we can. My name is Trisha Calhoun and I work at Lahaina Intermediate and I teach eighth grade earth science. Our first unit was climate change and then the focus that we're in right now is humans' impacts on the environment. So we looked at the plastic problem. They learned about water currents to understand how the microplastics come to Hawaii. So then they learned like the process of density and salinity and how the water moves throughout the entire earth. And they looked at how much plastic was in the different beaches on the North Shore versus the South Shore versus the West Shore. And they measured it. They graphed it and they weighed it. They sorted it. They collected the data. Every piece of plastic in the world still exists in some shape or form. We know that plastic breaks down, but it doesn't really disappear. What it does do is turns into all these tiny little pieces called microplastics. Animals eat this plastic. It works its way all the way up the food chain to, you know, swordfish, marlin, all those big fish, the fish that we like to eat. Who likes poke? You know what poke is? Poke is tuna, the really, really big fish. The big fish have accumulated the most plastic in their guts. So that means that whatever they're eating, we're also eating. And they've actually found plastic in human stomachs. Once plastic warms up, it releases chemicals. So we don't want that in our bodies. We don't want it in the bodies of fish we're eating. We don't want it in our oceans at all. It's been a goal of mine for maybe a year to bring my students on a field trip. So I met Kuule at a professional development that I went to called Kupu Hau. And I presented it to her. I said, I want to go on a field trip, but I have 135 kids. And she was like, great! My name is Ko'ule Nani Maunapau, and I am executive director of a nonprofit organization called Ka'ehu. And we are currently managing 64 acres of coastal wetlands at Ka'ehu Bay. The intent is to do a cultural educational center. So to use this place as a resource to both teach Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian practices, but also teach other things that relate to science. For example, hydrology, archeology, span and we have marine biologists that come. So it's integrating both the culture and the science. We have one of our partners, Hawaii Wildlife Fund, take the students out to do a cleanup and then they bring back and they sort and recycle what they've collected. Because some of the materials we do collect gets recycled and sent to the Adidas Parley program and gets turned into shoes. We have Trilogy today who is teaching about microplastics. And that's really important because Ka'ehu has so much microplastics that have to be scooped up with a net or cleaned by hand. There's more plastic than I thought there would be. Uh, all over the beach, it's crazy. It came from like all over the world. And then we have Skippy Hao, who we're honored to have him here. He, he's with DLNR, Department of Aquatic Resources, and he's teaching fish life in the streams and in the ocean. And then we have Archie Kalepa, who joined our staff, and they're teaching about kalo. The history of kalo, haloa, they're learning about cleaning out invasive species. My favorite part of the field trip would have to be the lo'i because it taught you like how you can sustain like the plants, what kind of environment you need. And we had James of Hui o Kavai Ola. He came and he did water testing with the students. As we teach these students this, we're actually learning it ourselves. So in this program, the students are collecting the data. The students are helping us analyze the data. And the students are gonna help us come up with solutions on how to address it. What we're doing right now isn't necessarily all that we can do. So lastly, they did a design thinking project to be able to identify a problem and then come up with these crazy and wild ideas of like how we might address this. It's kind of like bringing that creativity aspect. It actually says in the state constitution that we have by law the responsibility to take care of its natural beauty and resources. If you lay this foundation and this understanding, then that becomes like a fundamental like moral aspect of their reality. Most of the things that we use, we don't really realize that it ends up going into our ocean and harming our animals. A lot of different animals do a lot of different things for us as humans, you know? So if we don't take care of them, they're not gonna be able to take care of us in the same way. When we're older, it's gonna be more up to us to take care of it. So we have to know how to deal with things like this. 
It's so important to have experience like this. Just by meeting these five not-for-profit groups, they had mentors, people that are like doing the work. They got to have new experiences, they connected with the land. They were able to see these processes firsthand. I think that that one day kind of shaped their education for the year more so than any other day. I totally enjoyed it because me, I like more of a hands-on work and like being able to go there and do that experience was actually pretty cool because we were able to see what's really going on in our environment and it showed us how that we can take care of it and better understand what's going on.